Take a slow deep breath into your body. And as you exhale, feel all of the parts of you begin to assemble. Let the bones of the body become heavy and the flesh become light. Expand your breath and feel in your body where your breath is moving. Let the mind settle there with what it notices about the breath moving in and the breath moving out. As you're sitting there, use your powers of imagination to see the worries and the frustrations, the thoughts that have over-occupied that your mind, that time is done. See them dropping away like the leaves in the fall from the trees, dropping down onto the floor and being absorbed by the earth. For now, these thoughts are done. This is my time. This is my time for my healing, to move myself towards wholeness, to move myself into a place of equanimity and peace. Bring your hands up to your heart. As you exhale, bow your head. Reflect on that inner light of awareness and then release your hands. Then open your eyes and lift your head. Inhale your arms up. Interweave the fingers and turn the palms to the sky. And at the same time, bow your head. Then release, twist to your right. And release, twist to your left. Release, bring your legs out in front of you and pump your thighs. Now bring the bottoms of your feet together and release the inner thighs for a moment. We'll be doing a lot of standing postures as we've already mentioned and as you probably saw <laughs> in the class title. So the inner thighs being open is going to be very important for what we call the um, lateral open pelvis poses. These are the poses like Trikonasana, Parjokonasana, Parjokonasana, and Virabhadrasana too. So if you know, I don't have any idea what you just said, don't worry, you'll know soon. Then bring your legs together and stretch your legs out. Now cross your shins and roll over onto your hands and knees and come into Adho Svanasana. It's okay to move around a little bit at first. And then after you've jiggled and wiggled, then come into the pose. Even though that looks steady on the outside, there's always a little fine attunements going on. And now let's step up to the front of the mat for the forward bend Uttanasana.
and then bend the knees and inhale up and bring your hands to your heart. Before we begin, we should do one, two things. Uh, the hamstring stretch and the inner thigh stretch. That way, they're ready, the legs are ready for all those standing postures. So go ahead and lie down. Let's do the right leg first. There are several of those poses that will be coming up. Trikonasana, which is tri triangle pose. Haribhita Trikonasana, which is revolved triangle. Parshval Tanasana, which is the intense side stretch pose. And Virabhadrasana 3, the warrior 3 pose. Those are postures that really require open hamstrings. So if you have tight hamstrings, you have two more breaths in order to get the right hamstring to release and be ready for the night. <laughs> no, don't worry about a thing. It'll all be fine. You'll be able to modify everything that comes up. Let's do the left leg now. and release. Go back to the right leg and take that leg out to the side. I'm gonna change my position. And that way, if you need to peep up at the uh, screen, you'll see that I've taken my left leg that will be mirroring your right leg out to the side if your body is positioned so that it's facing the computer screen or your iPad or phone. But we just wanna make sure you understand that even through the Left tip will come up a little bit. Don't press it down. Press the thigh bone down. And then just lengthen to that inner left thigh. Right thigh. Right thigh. Exhale, lift the leg up and release. And we'll do the other side. Again, you, you could even use your hand to remind the right thigh bone to press down. Yes. Okay. Yep. Now, in the past, when we've done this in the studio, we always put the blocks at the front of the mat and we go uh, from up dog, down dog into each side, up dog, down dog, and keep going. Tonight, because we're facing, we want to face the screen, we're actually going to do the pose. You can go ahead and bring your left leg up. We'll do the postures without that middle up dog and down dog between the two sides. I'm just giving you a little preliminary um, heads up that um, when you come to triangle pose on the right, you'll come up as if you were doing it from Tadasana and then go to the left which means that when you're on the left side doing your up dog, down dog, after you come from triangle pose or return to down dog, you'll step the left foot forward and do the next series from the left leg first and then come up and do the right side. So if you don't follow that, then don't worry. You can just follow this. Come with me. Let's go to the front of the mat. Your blocks are just handy. Whatever you've got, somewhere around. They'll be moving all about. Take a deep breath and inhale, up we go. And exhale, Uttanasana. It has begun. The fun, the excitement is here. Inhale, half forward bend. And exhale, step back to down facing dog. Adho Mukha Shvanasana. To start with, before we begin our first standing posture, let's do three up dogs and down dogs. And in between each side, as we do each pose, we'll reconnect with this particular sequence. So it's inhale and exhale. And then just let me remind you that if you're having trouble with this uh, practice as part of the flow, if you, get, you can always come down onto your hands and knees and do the cat and the cow or you can do child's pose and the modified cobra. Um, you probably all know that. I'll just be showing that as we go along through the practice together. So that's our three up dogs and down dogs. We end back and down facing dog. 
Lift the head, inhale deeply, and as you exhale, step the right foot forward. Now your right hand has a chance to find the block if you're gonna use a block. Bring it right behind the right leg, turn the left heel in, the left heel in, and then come up into Trikonasana. So you build triangle pose from the bottom up. Now, each time you get into the posture, you'll want to stay for a moment. You don't want to just fly through the postures and not receive the benefit of each pose. Especially when we experience it for the first time, that'll give us a chance to acclimate to it. So we felt the trikonasana on the right side, and we'll come up, turn the feet forward, adjust the legs to now take trikonasana to the left. It is important that you pay attention to your legs in all of these different postures. Sometimes the foot distances further apart are closer together, and sometimes the back foot turns will be turned to face forward, and sometimes the leg will be turned, the back leg will be turned to the almost the same direction that the front leg is facing. So pay close attention to how your legs are positioned. I'll be giving you clues all along the way. That way your pelvis and your spine will be able to participate wisely in all the poses. Now this is where we'll take an exhale and that right arm that's up in, that left arm that's up in the air will now come down. Inhale and on the exhale, bend your uh, right knee, come down and return to down facing dog. So that's how that will work. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, back to down facing dog. And one more time. Now, we'll repeat Trikonasana. So step that left foot forward. The back heel has to turn in so that the kneecap faces 90 degrees from where the Trikonasana knee is facing, the front leg knee. And then you come up and build a triangle pose from the bottom up. And then, we come into Virabhadrasana too. So as you bend the knee to come into Virabhadrasana too, you might notice that your feet are too close together. The distance between Trikonasana feet and Virabhadrasana two feet could be about six inches. So it's okay to take a little time to adjust your back leg and then gaze over the right fingertips. Now, when you're done with this posture, you inhale up, change the direction of the feet, and we return to Trikonasana on the left side. Keep your legs strong throughout. The feet, the four corners of each foot should stay grounded, the thighs should stay strong and confined and firm, and the bit of the abdomen should stay lifted so that when you make transitions, it goes smoothly. And then adjust the feet again. If you wiggle the feet close together, usually during transitions, the feet somehow or another sneak close together. So now we're in Virabhadrasana 2 on the left side. And so far, everything is just a piece of cake. <laughs> now that right arm that's hanging out behind you, let it swoop over your head and find the floor with your left hand. And you're ready to step back into Aramukha Svanasana again. Okay, we're ready for our little vinyasa. Inhale into Urdhva Mukha, exhale into Adho Mukha. Or you could come down, child's pose to modified cobra with the arms straight. Child's pose to modified cobra. And then we're all ready to step that right foot forward. Let's see, it'll be the left foot, yep, yeah, left foot forward. And so now we come back up into Trikonasana. So we'll always start here. And this gets really exciting because you say, okay, now we're going to add another pose. We know what's next. No surprises. Remember, adjust your feet a little bit. If the Virabhadrasana 2 stance, the warrior 2 stance is too close together. Our next posture from here will be side angle pose. So, Swing that right arm over your head, 
come down to your block or the floor. Find where do you want to put that left arm? Okay, so now from here, we inhale all the way up. And we return to Trikonasana on the right side. And remember the three things that help us remain stable during, stable during transitions. Grounded feet, strong legs, and the lift of the lower abdominals. So when I bend my knee and come up, it's a lot easier if I've got those three things happening. So now we're back to Virajasana 2. Oh, wonderful posture for making the legs strong and stable. And then side angle pose, Utita Parjvakonasana. So we've done the three poses on each side. That means that now on your right side, you're ready to return to down facing dog. Let's take the top arm and swing it around behind us and down to the floor and reach the right leg back. Let's do our vinyasa. And as a reminder, you could come down and do cat and cow. Inhale, exhale, inhale, Exhale. And then from here, we're ready for Trikonasana. Step that right foot forward. Now things get really crazy. So here's a good way to remember the sequence if you get lost and can't find the video. The first three postures we're all open pelvis poses. I'm now in Virabhadrasana 2, and now I move into Uttita Parvakonasana. Side angle pose. All open pelvis poses, which meant the front of the body will face the computer screen or facing forward. And the next three poses will be easy to remember because they're all the balancing poses. So now we're just going to take that left arm out of the pose for a moment and step the left foot up towards the right foot and then move your block out there so you can now come up into Ardhachandrasana. So I'm going to hide behind the plant. Find furniture to grab hold of if you lose your balance. And then take your left arm up. Well, if, once, you get just, once you get steady, it feels like you can just hold it forever, doesn't it? Okay, let's come back down. A quick moment in triangle pose. So we can then inhale, come up, and do the other side. Now to the left. Triangle first. Trikonasana. If you only have one block, you just have to keep carrying it with you everywhere you go. Virabhadrasana 2, I'm adjusting my foot distance. I don't want to do baby Virabhadrasana 2, I want a challenging Virabhadrasana 2. And now Uttita Parjvakonasana, the left hand finds the block on the floor or it goes down to the floor. And now, remember, the next posture is Ardha Chandrasana, the half moon. So I take my right hand, place it on the left hip. I'm going to step the right foot up to the left heel and then move my block out a little bit in front of the little toe side of my foot, and up I come. Let's see if my balance is a little bit better on this side to my, uh, there. Now we're smoking. So you have to focus when you get into the balanced postures. Oh, and then if you're having trouble with this one, just wait till the next one. But don't worry, just the effort alone, just the, the, the struggle to try is beneficial. Now from here, we come down to a lunge so that we can move back in a downward facing dog. You know the three options now, do your three options.
And now step your left foot forward, Trikonasana. Now in this pose, this coming out, which will be, oh, you know it. If you've practiced with me before, this will be Virajasana 3. I'll give you several options. So uh, you might want to be near a piece of furniture. You might want to make sure you have both of your blocks on this side of the mat if you need your hands down, or just be ready to soar. Virabhadrasana 2. Again, wiggling the feet a little further apart for a wider stance. Uttita Prajvakonasana. Now let's really take our time as we go into Ardha Chandrasana. Take the left hand to your hip, step your right foot up a little closer. That way it will make it a little easier to get your left hand out there and then shift the weight onto the left hand and up you come into Ardha Chandrasana. <clears throat> then take the arm up. There's all kinds of arm positions you can do for the Virabhadrasana 3. So one is, if I just turn my pelvis down towards the floor, lift that left inner thigh, so I make sure I'm still not turning my pelvis out, my pelvis is low, I can put both of my hands down the blocks and just stay here. If you feel like you're having struggle with balance and you can't lift the arm, both arms by your head, since you're standing on the right leg, just lift your left arm like we do in balancing cat. It's okay to be a little wobbly. Or you can take both arms up, and I can't because I have a piece of furniture in my way. I thought I had planned well, but obviously not. But um, you can also take the arms out to the side like airplane means. But now from here, we exhale and go into a lunge. And then up you come to go to the other side. Chukhanasana to the right. I bet your hearts are beating now. If you're sticking with me, are you staying with me or have you given up? Virabhadrasana too. I bet you're with me. It's too fun to try. You have to try. Uttita Prajvakonasana, side angle pose. And now Ardha Chandrasana, where I get to disappear behind my plant. I'm going to scoot back just a little bit and see if I can stay in view of the camera a little bit better. Ah, oh, there I am. That back leg, don't let, if the back leg sags, it pulls you out of the pose. So you have to keep it lifted. have to keep it full of life and energy. And the standing leg, if you can see yourself, should be vertical. And then turn towards the floor. Now, if you, you don't actually have to have props. You can put both of your hands on the floor. <clears throat> if you have uh, hamstrings that will let you. Or you can have your blocks. And then, on this side, I'll try to take my arms by my ears. And remember, on the exit, lunge. This time, to downward facing dog. Upward. Downward. Two more times of whatever back bend and forward bend you are doing. Now take a deep breath, inhale, and on your exhale, step the right foot forward, Trikonasana. Well, how is everything going so far, everyone out there? Hmm. Adelta will tell me later if she can watch and tell me if people are starting to leave. <laughs> She'll write down all the names. There was just I'm teasing. I'm teasing. 
I just want everyone to have fun. Even if you have to take a break. I do believe there's a lot of benefit in the standing postures. Uttita Parjvokanasana again, the side angle pose. So remember, the first three poses were all the open pelvis poses. Then the next three are all the balancing poses that we do in standing. So first, Arjuna Remember, I'm back behind the plant again. I apologize, but you can see my torso and my leg. I'm going to back up just a little bit for you. And then we turn towards the floor for, for, uh, for Virabhadrasana 3, excuse me. I, I, I've not memorized the script perfectly. And now here's why I will have to turn my back to you. The Parivrita Arjandrasana. So this is where the right hand, I'm oh sorry, your left hand, your left hand will stay on the block. You're balancing on the right leg and you're going to turn towards the back of the room. You're going to turn away from your computer screen. Do the best you can and take your left arm up if you make it. I'm sorry, your right arm. Right arm up, thank you. The little voice inside my head. On your exhale, just come down, catch the floor, and then inhale up. Open up for Trikonasana on the other side. Virabhadrasana 2. All of the six poses we've done so far, all of you all want us to keep our legs strong. Side angle pose. The transitions work again much better when the legs are strong. Okay, half moon. And then from Ardha Chandrasana, half moon, we turn towards the floor for Virabhadrasana 3, or Warrior 3, and any other variations with the arms that work well for you. If you lift the left arm, I'm sorry, this will be lifting the, yeah, the left arm. So you're standing on the left leg, right arm, excuse me. And then you, you will reach opposite arm to opposite leg. And then you place your hand back down, bend your left knee and, uh, oh, sorry, thought went away for a moment. We're getting ready to do Paribhita Trikonasana. So I'm back with you, good news. And we're going to do the twist. So put your right hand on the block and turn towards the wall behind you. And then if you get the left shoulder, over your right shoulder, take the arm up. Full expression of the pose Paribhita Ardha Chandrasana. And then turn towards the floor. Catch the floor, just leave your blocks behind and come into your downward facing dog, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. And now we're ready for our movement. Inhale, Ardha Mukha. Exhale, Ardha Mukha. This would be a great time for a rest for anyone who needs a break. Or you can say, let me challenge myself. Let's stay with the game. Here we go, Trikonasana, left side. <laughs> Virabhadrasana two. So when you watch the video and you practice this, just ignore my mistakes with left, right stuff, okay? But just and just enjoy it. It's all for fun. It's all because we're all just stuck at home and we have to do something, right? We have to keep our practices going. 
Okay, signing a pose, Uchita Parjva Konasana. So you've done the three safe ones. It's time now to do the balancing postures again. Oh, and we get to add another pose, don't we? Mm. Now, if you've never done the sequence before, you have to start pondering what could come after Parivrita Arjandrasana. Well, let's wait and see. So here we go. Arjandrasana. Yogadrasana three. Parivrita Ardhachandrasana, with the teacher losing his balance, which is fine. Makes me human, right? And now from the revolved half moon, revolved Trikonasana. So you just step the right leg down, but keep the knee facing almost as forward as the left knee. So the leg turns in, or it turns out a little bit, like 20 or 30 degrees. The right hand is going to keep that block, so you can now turn to face the wall still. Now from this pose, from the Parivrita Trikonasana, we will inhale up. So from Parivrita Trikonasana, inhale up and turn forward. Now Trikonasana to the other side, to your right. That's seven of the poses. Now we have to do them on this side. Hmm. Bend the knee, Virajasana two. Utita partial Konasana. I'm going to just do a little shuffle back. Ardha Chandrasana. That little shuffle back is for me. You don't have to do that part. That way I can see the screen and you can see me. Virabhadrasana three. Again, you might need a chair. You might need both blocks. You could use the floor if your hamstrings let you. If your hamstrings are super tight, you can even bend that standing leg when you're doing this part practice. And now your left hand is going to be on your block that is on the inside of your right foot and then turn for Parivrita Ardhachandrasana. The back leg will start to sink. Don't let it. Give it a lot of power. And then the leg that's in the air reaches back, finds the floor, bring your block back, place it on the inside of your right foot Parivita Trikonasana. And then turn towards the floor. Move your blocks all out of the way, down facing dog. I bet some of us now have forgotten. Today was a cooler day. We've probably warmed things up a bit. Do the vinyasa of choice. And then inhale on the exhale step, the right foot forward. Back to the pose, Trikonasana. You get to repeat this one a lot tonight, don't you? Ah. So now we are going to Close pelvis poses. Parivita Trikonasana was the first one. That means that now the pelvis is facing to the left or the right instead of forward. So we have another pose that's a closed pelvis posture. And Virabhadrasana 2 now that we'll introduce um, after Parivita Trikonasana. Side angle pose, Vitita Parvakonasana. And now the balance poses. Ardha Chandrasana, Virabhadrasana 3,
Parivrita Ardhasandrasana. Parivrita Trikonasana. Now remember, these poses, the pelvis has to face to the side, not forward. So the back leg has to turn in a lot for the pelvis to have the freedom to do that. Now we'll go into partial tanasana. We'll just do the hands down version. So turn towards the floor, have your spine extended and straight. So you use a block or blocks. If you only have one block, you could put the one block in front of you and both of your hands on it with your elbows straight, extend your spine. Or you could have one block on either side of your foot. And now you will all bend our elbows and go a little bit further. Go down as far as you can. If you don't need the blocks, then just let go of them. Bend over the right leg. And then from here, come back to the straight arms. And we'll be inhaling up. Inhale. And turn your feet forward. Turn the right foot in and the left leg out. Trikonasana to your left. I hope everyone's okay. It's probably a good idea that the sound is turned off. Our, uh, I'm sorry, Virajasana too. Side angle pose, Uttita Pajmukhanasana. And now Ardha Chandrasana. Don't forget, I don't keep mentioning it, but the four point, points of your feet, if they are on the floor, one foot of both feet, they should be grounded. And then thighs are strong, whether they're floating in the air or you're using them for standing and the pit of the abdomen will just stay lifted. Then a Virabhadrasana three. In this pose, you want to sense that your pelvis is level and it stays level as you turn into Parvita Ardha Chandrasana. And then from here, Parvita Trikonasana. And then from here, Parjvotanasana. First, catch the spine long, and then you're ready. Bend the elbows and down you come. Stay on the blocks if you need to. Stop when, you, when your hamstring says stop. Then come back up to the extended arm. Lengthen the spine for just a moment. From here, we'll return to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Bend the knee, blocks off to the side, downward dog. Inhale, Urva. Exhale, Adho. Or remember, child's pose to Cobra. Or cat and cow. And then we'll all step the left foot forward for Chikonasana. Oh, Terry, Terry, what's next? I'm sure you figured it out. Vibhajasana 2. Uttita Parajvakonasana, side angle pose. Now the three bouncing postures, Ardha Chandrasana. And then Virabhadrasana three. And I'm using my hands on the blocks because it's easier for me to teach. I found it hard for me to speak and teach when I'm in the full pose. So it's for you, I want you to challenge yourself extremely. Now Parivita Ardha Chandrasana, go the full way. Now, Parivita Chakamasana. Nah, 
And then first we do Pajvottanasana with our spine extended to prepare us to then bend over the left leg and forward bend. Then come back up and this time bend your knee. Virajasana one might have a wider stance, so adjust your, your right foot back a little bit if you need to. And then stay steady, strong legs, grounded feet. And then inhale, lift, keep the bit of the abdomen lifted. Virabhadrasana one. For those of you who have open shoulders, join your palms together and lift the chin. Then we'll inhale up out of the pose, open the arms, and we're ready for Trikonasana on the right side. Virajasana two. Uttita Parjvakonasana. Ready? Ardha Chandrasana. Virajasana three. Parivrita or Arjandrasana. Parivrita Trikonasana. And then Parjvottanasana, part one with the arms straight to extend the spine and then bend forward. Remember that Virabhadrasana one, which is also a closed pelvis pose, we might have to adjust the back leg back a little bit, a wider stance and then inhale up you come. Then adjust your arms. Either have the arms where they're comfortable, maybe a little bit wide, or parallel, or together with the head up, or the chin up, we should say. This is where we will release in the downward facing dog. <laughs> And I know you've got it in you to do it all one more time. Oh, it's fun to challenge the body. It makes you feel like you've accomplished something. Okay. Right foot forward. Trikonasana. What in the world is left? There's only one lateral pose left. We've done nine of them. One more to go. Have you got to figure it out? It's the most challenging one. Uh, and it has so many wonderful benefits. It has got so much happening in it. Oh, I can't wait. We've actually gotten so warmed up from all these other poses. We should be able to do it just fine. Utita Parsh, Utita Parshakonasana. I'm so excited I can't even speak. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a hint. It's related to this pose. Now, Arjandrasana. Virajasana three. See. Ah. Parivrita Arjandrasana. Mm. 
Padre Brito, tu conosci me. Into a side stretch pose with the spine extended. And then bend over the right leg. Four points of each of your feet grounded. Thighs firm. Bit of the abdomen lifted. Come back to extended spine version. Bend the right knee and inhale up in the Virabhadrasana one. Now this next posture that we're adding is Parivita Parjokonasana, the revolved side angle pose. For this, I'm going to actually teach it a little simplified for us. So let's on an exhale, come all the way down and lift the left heel and drop down on the knee. I'm going to actually switch sides for a moment so that I'm facing the camera as we do a few different variations. You could actually keep your uh, left your uh, left arm on the inside of your right leg and just turn to face the uh, camera. Or you could go ahead and place your arm on the outside of your leg and try to move the arm down as far as you can. If you can't get the arm so that it comes down to the floor or a block, you can always make a fist and place your this will be your right hand on top, left hand, left hand on top. Then tuck your toes of your back leg and lift that knee up. Or if you're where you think you can, add the top arm. Make it the full pose, full power. Press into your back heel, reach into your top arm. Separate the two. A long linear twisting pose to come out. Let's go ahead and drop the knee down. Release, now I'm gonna take my right leg forward and my left leg back, so I'm mirroring you again, and then inhale, up you come. Ah, we're ready for the other side. That'll warm you up on it. Oh, just enough time to do the other side. Trikonasana. Hmm, I know, I know what you're thinking. I need some food and a nice shavasana, uh, a relaxing evening <laughs> in my sequestered spot. Okay, side angle, Udita Parjokonasana. Okay, we're ready for the balance sequence. Arjitandrasana. Virabhadrasana, Virabhadrasana three. So if I lift one arm, it'll be the left arm. I think I said that incorrectly earlier. So just make sure it's the right leg reaching back and the left arm reaching forward. And then you're ready for the revolved half moon. Parivita Arjitandrasana. Revolved Trikonasana. Parjvo Tanasana, the intense side stretch pose. Extend, one breath, release. And then come back to extend the spine, bend the left knee and inhale. Come all the way up and the Virabhadrasana one, the variation that works for you. Release. Remember, we came all the way down and I switched. So I'm not mirroring you now. I'm going to do the same side as you. So your right elbow on the outside of the left knee. You can keep your right hand on that block if you like the simple version. But we can also try a little bit more challenging. Here's your right hand. Here's your left hand on top. Push down to get the twist. From here, you can lift the back leg or... Get the armpit as close to the top of the thigh as you can, hand to the floor of the block. Now we all will tuck the back leg 
toes that we can lift the knee and then add that right arm. Ah, oh, mm, it does so much, doesn't it? I don't think there's anything that this pose does not hit. Mm, it feels wonderful. And guess what? Release and you're not done. Downward facing dog. Well, what I meant by not done is there's still more class, right? We have to do our three movements. And there is one more wide-legged standing pose. It doesn't go side to side. It's the one symmetrical one. Inhale, lift your head and exhale, step or jump up to the front of your mat and be in Uttanasana for a moment. Oh, oh that feels so nice, doesn't it? Then bend your knees and swoop the arms out and up to the side and then down to the heart. The Prasarna Panocharasana is the wide-legged forward bend. And what is nice to do, what, the reason why it's nice to add that at the end of all of those lateral standing poses going side to side is what integrates the spine back to a more neutral position. So let's do that now. And we'll have, I'm going to put my blocks in the front of my mat and do this as if my hamstrings are very tight. Step the feet wide apart. Turn the feet in just a little bit to make sure the thigh bones are internally rotated more than externally rotated. Do you feel the four points of your feet, the firmness of your thighs, the lift of the pit of the abdomen? Let's lift that lift of the chest, the lift of the chin, and exhale, come down. Like we did in Parjvottanasana, for a moment we're in the extended spine. Okay, and then bend your elbows and walk your hands back. You can adjust the feet closer together or further apart and then come down to the pose that best suits your body. Let's take a few breaths here. Don't be miserable. If you're miserable, back out a little bit. Inhale, come up. Walk your hands forward. Be in the extended spine. Use your blocks if you need to. At this point, wiggle the feet together a little bit or even all the way for forward bend, but I'm going to come back just halfway. Keep the knees bent as I inhale, come out. Take another breath, inhale, and exhale, step the feet together. This is where you get to pause and feel. Yes. You're right, <laughs> it is time for Shavasana. So please dim the lights in your home if you can and make sure that if there's other people around, let them know that you're now going to relax because all of that work, all of those standing poses, that all needs to be integrated into your physical body, into the nervous system, into your mind and your emotional layers. Let that all soak in. Be very comfortable, including the temperature of your body. In just a moment, I'll be bringing you out.
Take a slow deep breath into your body and then exhale softly. Earlier this week, Adelpha shared with us this wonderful message from TS and Sri so Little Build Psychic Immunity. And I just wanted to share uh, one of the suggestions uh, from his list. And each class, I'll probably get to share more and more with you, but I really like this one a lot. Practice greater tolerance. Knowing that this is a time of hardship and we all feel stuck, practice patience and steadiness. By embodying a sense of tolerance, keep your subtle, your subtle body open and avoid shutting down. Keep the channels of your breath, circulation, and neurological flow clear. There's another one. Listen. See goodness in others. See into the highest nature of each person you are with, even when their behavior, attitude, or mind frame is imperfect. Salvatore has taught that many times in the classes that I've been with her you know, and it is the perfect message for all of us at this time. Let's bend our knees and begin to rock the legs gently side to side. And then roll to your right. Make sure you're pressing your hands down into the floor to help you lift up to a comfortable seated position. It is such a great pleasure <laughs> to have the dogs wait till after Shavasana to start barking. But it is a wonderful pleasure to have you come and practice with me. My best is to all of you. Thank you. Namaste.